you survived the gunshot, walked away from the knife fight, even managed not to die when that Molotov cocktail turned your sleeve into a torch. But here's the punchline. It's not the dramatic stuff that's going to kill you. It's the paper cut you ignored, the scrape from crawling through that window, the dog bite from the mutt you thought was friendly. Three days later, that tiny wound looks like a crime scene. Red streaks racing toward your heart like they've got somewhere important to be. You're burning with fever while shivering like it's December. And that smell? That's not the garbage outside. That's you rotting from the inside out. Welcome to the real apocalypse killer. Not bullets, not bombs, not whatever turned the world into this nightmare. Bacteria. The same microscopic assassins that were ending people before we invented fire. They don't care how tough you are. They just see an opening and move in like they own the place. But bacteria follow rules. And if you know those rules, how to spot them before they go critical, how to flush out bacterial strongholds when kitchen surgery becomes your only option, you might just evict these bacterial squatters before they turn you into fertilizer. Here's how you fight back when the pharmacies are empty and the hospitals are graveyards. What infection actually looks like. Forget Hollywood. Real infection doesn't politely announce itself. The wound gets hot, like someone's holding a blowtorch underneath your skin. Angry red spreads outward like spilled paint. Your tissue swells up like a balloon about to pop. The pain shifts from clean hurt to something deep, throbbing, persistent. But the real, your screwed signal, red streaks. Thin lines running from the wound toward your heart like someone drew on you with a marker. That's your lymphatic system screaming that the infection has gone mobile. Once those streaks reach your core, you're looking at sepsis. And here's what they don't tell you in survival manuals. A guy in Detroit ignored red streaks on his arm for two days, thought he could tough it out. By day three, he couldn't stand. By day four, he was gone. Sepsis without hospitals doesn't negotiate. Step one, flush it like your life depends on it. Cut away clothing, remove dressings, and face the music. See that yellow-green pus? Bacterial soup. It has to go. Find the cleanest water you can. Boiled is best. Bottled works. Questionable tap water beats dying. Pour it directly over the wound. Not gently, like you're power washing a driveway. You're flushing out an invasion. Make saline, if you can. One teaspoon salt, one cup boiled water. Let it cool so it won't cook you alive. Hydrogen peroxide? Use it once to bubble out the nastiness, then stop. It kills bacteria and your tissue with equal enthusiasm. Step 2. Drain the swamp. Pus pockets are bacterial headquarters. They have to go. Find the lowest point of swelling and apply firm, steady pressure. Don't squeeze like a zit. Let gravity do the work. What comes out will be horrifying. Yellow, green, maybe bloody, smells like death moved in permanently. This is good. Every drop of pus is fewer bacteria your immune system has to murder. Flush again. More water, more saline. Rinse out every last holdout. Air dry if possible. Step three, chemical warfare. Fish antibiotics, that supplies, whatever you can raid. Amoxicillin, doxycycline, cephaloxin. Bacteria don't care what species the pills were made for. Follow the dosage like scripture. Don't skip doses. Don't stop early. That's how you breed antibiotic-resistant super bacteria. And those will kill you just for the practice. No pills? Time for nature's pharmacy. Raw honey, not that corn syrup garbage. Spread it on clean gauze. Honey's been killing bacteria since before humans invented writing. Crush garlic, let it sit 10 minutes, mix with olive oil, apply to wound. The smell will clear rooms and bacteria with equal efficiency. Tea tree oil, diluted with water. Straight tea tree oil will burn like napalm. Diluted, it's napalm for bacteria only. Step four. Make life hell for your bacterial tenants. Bacteria hate extremes. Heat makes them miserable, and miserable bacteria are ineffective bacteria. Hot compresses, 15 minutes on, 15 off. Use the hottest water you can stand without cooking yourself. Heat brings white blood cells to the party like reinforcements storming the beach. Direct sunlight if you've got it. UV kills bacteria. Warmth boosts immunity. Just don't fall asleep and turn into jerky. 
Women in Atlanta tried to wait out an infected foot without treatment, just wrapped it and hoped. The red streaks hit her thigh in 18 hours. After that, hoping didn't matter anymore. Step five, feed the war machine. Your immune system is fighting World War III at the cellular level. It needs supplies or it loses. Water electrolytes anything non-poisonous. Dehydration makes your blood thick and useless. Protein, canned fish, beans, nuts, whatever you can scavenge. Your body is rebuilding tissue while fighting. You need raw materials. Sleep is non-negotiable. Your immune system works best when you're unconscious. Find security, get four hours minimum. Less than that, and you're fighting with one hand tied behind your back. Vitamin C burns through your system like race fuel. Fresh fruit, tablets, even those chalky emergency rations load up. Step six, monitor like it's planning murder. Because it is. Check twice daily. Measure the red area with your finger. Mark it with pen. If it's spreading despite treatment, escalate immediately. Fever over 101 degrees Fahrenheit means war. Over 103 degrees Fahrenheit means you're losing. Watch for confusion, breathing problems, racing heart. That's the infection going systemic, heading for your organs. At that point, you've got hours, not days. The battlefield just shifted from your arm to your entire body. Step 7. Surgery with kitchen equipment. Sometimes dead tissue forms. Black, gray, foul-smelling patches that look like roadkill. It has to come out. All of it. Your body can't heal what's already dead, and bacteria are using it like a bunker. Find your sharpest, cleanest blade. Scalpel, razor, kitchen knife, whatever works. Sterilize a fire, alcohol, or boiling water. Cut away all dead tissue. It'll be obvious. Discolored, won't bleed when cut, smells like death's armpit. This is debridement. It's exactly as fun as it sounds. Healthy tissue underneath will bleed. Good. Bleeding means blood flow, means your immune system can reach the battlefield. Flush the wound one more time, reapply your antimicrobial treatment, dress it clean, cross your fingers. Why this works. Your immune system is a middle evil army fighting on unfamiliar ground. Flushing removes bacterial strongholds. Antibiotics poison the enemy. Heat brings reinforcements. Supporting your health keeps your army supplied and in the fight. Bacteria multiply exponentially. One becomes a million in hours. But they also die exponentially when conditions turn against them. Every bacterial casualty makes the next one easier to kill. You're not treating infection. You're conducting biological warfare at the cellular level. The fever, the swelling, the red streaks, those aren't signs of failure. They're signs your immune system showed up armed and ready. The trick is making sure it wins before the battle destroys everything worth saving. The truth. Most infection deaths aren't exotic. They're mundane. Preventable. The fence scratch ignored because you had other problems. The animal bite you cleaned good enough. The cooking burn you figured would heal on its own. In a world without hospitals, every minor injury is a potential execution. But knowledge is your antibiotic. Preparation is your surgeon. Refusing to die is your ICU. You've cleaned the wound. Started treatment. You're monitoring for disaster. The redness is shrinking. Fever's dropping. The smell is fading. You just want a battle that's killed humans since we had opposable thumbs. But you're not done. There's another wound tomorrow. Another infection next week. Another impossible fight that you'll win through bloody-minded stubbornness and knowing these seven steps by heart. Staying alive when everything wants you dead? That's the ultimate rebellion. Now wash your hands. The next infection might not be yours.